Okay, so uh, so my name is Ken Ringdahl, um, Vice President of Engineering at uh, at Destone. Uh, we are a uh, software company. Um, give you a quick uh, agenda here. Um, so here to talk about cloud-hosted desktops and um, you know uh, bringing cloud-hosted desktops to a cloud platform like OpenStack. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is I'll do a quick introduction to, to Desktone, who we are, what we do, uh, give everyone a little background there, uh, talk about the evolution of the desktop. The desktop is, is of course, ever-changing, but there's been significant innovation to the desktop in the last five years specifically. Uh, so we'll go through that. Uh, understand what desktops in the cloud really means. Um, who's it good for? Um, you know, what, are, what are some sample use cases? Uh, what are some of the impacts? of doing desktops in the cloud. Um, talk about the market opportunity uh, for, for desktops in the cloud, virtual desktops and desktops in the cloud. Uh, give you a, a, a little bit of an architectural overview. You know, technical audience here want to give you folks a little bit uh, of an understanding of, of how a, a DAS platform works, specifically how we're architected, uh, how it's different from, from enterprise VDI. Um, go over some. You know, w when you bring cloud-hosted desktops and OpenStack together, go, go over some of the benefits of, of bringing those two together. Um, and then I'll leave, you know, plenty of time at the end for questions. Uh, so, and, and I'll leave most of the questions for the end. If anyone has a burning question that, you know, they got to just raise your hand. Uh, we, we can certainly stop, but I'd prefer to move the questions to the end. Okay? Um, before I get started, um, just a quick show of hands. Who knows what VDI is? Who's using VDI? Is everyone, who, who here uses a virtual desktop on a daily basis? It's your, it's your regular, it's, it's good. That's good, it's more than I thought actually, which is good. Okay, um, so uh, who is Destone? So, so we're, we're a software company. We were founded in 2007. Uh, I was on the founding engineering team, so I've been at Destone uh, since we raised our first round of funding. Um, we, uh, you, you see a, a, a sample of our service providers on the left here and a sample of our customers on the right. So um, we, we are a virtual desktop platform that's built for service providers. Uh, so from, from day one, we built a software platform. We have our own intellectual property. Uh, we don't leverage any third party uh, broker technology. Uh, the, the technology we have is, was built on our own. When we set out, um, you know, five, five, six years ago uh, and, and founded Destone, um, you know, we looked at, at the market and, and uh, in, in a few moments here, I'll go over kind of the evolution here, but um, we determined that uh, we, we essentially founded what's called desktops as a service, which is really a service provider delivering a desktop service, which is different from your internal IT organization, even though some IT organizations consider them consider themselves service providers to the enterprise, but, uh, but we have a specific focus on uh, service providers delivering a hosted solution as a subscription service. Um, we have uh, eight patents on desktop as a service. We'll go, uh, I have a, a slide that goes through that in a, in a bit, but we are headquartered just outside Boston, Massachusetts in a uh, town called Lexington. It's just, uh, just a suburb of Boston, so, okay. Um, so, Desktops are changing, of course, in, in the 1990s. We had Windows 95, Windows 98, really the, the first uh, really client operating system uh, in the desktop, Windows operating system. Lots of legacy apps that were in Windows, right? Is, you know, um, but, but the desktop is changing, right? So uh, as, as we kind of look at it, 2008, we, we look at as really the evolution of VDI. There were, you know, there's, there's been lots of desktop virtualization prior to that, uh, but we really look at that as, as kind of the beginning of the change to a virtualized desktop and moving a desktop into the data center. Um, you see the evolution of operating systems there, um, you know, but, but it's changing, right? So you bring your own device. I mean, how many people have iPads and Android tablets and want to connect to the desktop and don't want a full desktop session? Maybe you just need an app or a file off your desktop and you don't want to have to be at your desktop, right? So bring your own device is, is radically changing the landscape of desktops. Um, you know, it's, everyone's got their iPhone devices and their Android phones and, and iPads that they're bringing into the enterprise, and the enterprise is having to, to, to adapt to that. Um, and virtual desktops really helps the mobility use case there. Um, 
the migration, right? Everyone knows Windows XP is going away. Uh, Microsoft has been warning people for years and years. Um, but, but there's still a lot of Windows 7 migrations coming. Windows 8 is coming in a week and a half or so here. Um, you know, mobile employees, right? Uh, you know, lots of, of large companies are, are transitioning to work at home and smaller branch offices and sending people out of their office because it's expensive to, to, uh, to keep the lights on and pay for heating and, and all that expenses in the office. So they're increasingly sending people home. And, and what do you do for, for people that are home? You send them with a laptop. Well, when their laptop breaks and they're at home, they're dropping it in FedEx overnight. And they're, you know, what do they do for the 24 hour turnaround it takes to get another desktop back? So, um, so the desktop is changing. Uh, and there's also security and IP concerns. I mean, uh, you know, every, every couple months you hear a story about a laptop that had some kind of special file on it and got stolen and, and you know, had social security numbers or some kind of passwords on it. Um, so there's security and IP concerns as well around the desktop and how do you, how do you make the desktop more secure? Okay, but so, so people have moved to virtual desktops, but, but virtual VDI is hard. Um, you know, we've, when, as I mentioned earlier, when we, when we founded Desktown, um, we, we knew that the, the VDI evolution was coming and people would struggle. So VDI is very different from running servers. Um, you know, uh, lots of upfront CapEx costs. So instead of, instead of paying for, for physical PCs that go into people's desks and you can replace them on a one, one, one by one basis uh, or refresh them in small cycles, instead you're buying large infrastructure, network, network, storage, compute capacity in the, in the data center. Um, you're having to, to allocate more data center space. I mean, we have lots of customers that come to us that say, we can't do VDI on-prem because we just don't have any power left. We don't have any power, we don't have any space. We, we can't do it, we need someone to host this for us. Um, so those challenges are there. Um, Lots of expertise. People that, that go do VDI, they have to hire full-time staff to, to manage the VDI environment. They, uh, they need experts. Sometimes these enterprises uh, are not large enterprises. They need, they need to get a SAN administrator or some other specialized talent um, to, to manage the, the VDI environment. Uh, it's complex. Um, you know, the, uh, anyone, anyone here who's done VDI knows that it's not just about, you know, layering a hypervisor and and a broker on top of it and, and, and you're done uh, and you've got your Windows virtualized operating systems. Uh, anyone who's done that knows that it is, is, it's all about the user experience and the protocol and, and all the other things that go with it. Um, if, if you've looked at advanced VDI, you're, you know, you, maybe you're looking at layering applications and you know, uh, having the, the app stream in and profile virtualization. So it's, it's hard and, and, and there's lots of you know, there's lots of learning to do, and, and when there's lots of learning to do, you either hire expensive consultants or you, you learn on the fly and you make mistakes and, and have to adjust. So, um, so doing on-prem VDI is hard, um, and that's the, the business challenge we looked to solve was let's, let's take that challenge away from them and put it in the hands of a service writer that does this at scale and can help the enterprise uh, do that. So. Um, and of course, performance. So performance is, uh, is, is incredibly important uh, to a desktop experience. I mean, um, anyone that, 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 any customers we talk to, they're all, you know, the, the first thing is, is it as good as my physical desktop? You know, can't, do, do my apps run? You know, will I, will I experience any, any latency or will I see any slowdown on my desktop? Um, it's very important that performance of the desktop is just as good and that comes down to, fine-tuning the, uh, the LAN or WAN connection to your desktop, fine-tuning the desktop itself. Anyone who's tried to take a, a regular Windows image and, and virtualize it, and you know, there was this whole concept of P2V, um, it's, it's challenging because there's lots of optimizations. Running the, the, the virtual, a virtual instance of Windows is very different. You have to optimize, you can't do regular security scans. You can't, you know, there's other things that you need to tweak in the registry. Uh, so it's, it's challenging and, uh, and, and that's why it's, it's a great opportunity for service writers to, uh, to help solve that problem for enterprises. Um, so our vision, desktops in the cloud. Uh, we saw 1990s desktops in, in a PC, physical device. 
Um, 2008 is about when we said, you know, desktop in the data center. Um, 2010 is when we see, is when we kind of look at as, as really the, the beginning of desktops in the cloud. Um, you can leverage an as a service model, right? So instead of, instead of putting all the capital expenditures up front, you know, the service provider who, who does that for a business, they're used to buying capital equipment up front and burning that down and, 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 and delivering a subscription service. So you can leverage as a service model, move capital expenditures to operational expenditures. Um, Centralized management, right? So, so moving your your desktops, uh, and this is part of part of EDI as well. But but centralizing your desktops, uh, moving your desktops, and virtualizing your desktops is supposed to help the desktop management case, right? Instead of having your desktops spread across the enterprise, your desktops are now local in the data center. You can control them; they're in one place. Uh, it's supposed to help things like patch management and other other things that that are uh, expensive processes uh, to to manage physical desktops. Um, data center proximity is a very, uh, very key thing because when you think about taking your desktop and now moving it to, to a hosted data center, um, the question is now, how do I get at my apps and my active directory and other things that are at my enterprise? Um, we, we call this the, the backhaul. So basically, when you move your desktops to the cloud, those desktops logically live on your network. Um, they're you know, your, your own enterprise at uh, IP addressing. Uh, you can reach those desktops uh, you know, from, your, from your corporate LAN, and those desktops can reach your applications. They can reach your exchange. They can reach your SharePoint and everything else that you have on the network. Uh, and that's because there's a site-to-site -site connection there that's either, you know, in some cases, an, M an MPLS link. In some cases, it's a site-to-site -site VPN. Uh, but, but basically, we, we allow the ability for those desktops to reach back, and they're logically on your network. So, to a, to a user, they appear like, you know, nothing's changed. My desktop is still there, but it's now hosted in this uh, service provider data center. Um, and then, of course, the cloud, everything's about elasticity and scalability. So moving to the cloud is all about flexibility and being able to scale up and scale down. Okay, so uh, w when you move your desktops to the cloud, the question then becomes, okay, what do I do as the, as the enterprise and the desktop administrator, and what does the service provider do? So above the waterline here is, you know, managed by the client. So the client still does their desktop management, right? So if they were patching their desktops and they were managing their desktops, that supporting their desktops, they still do that as they do today. They can access them just like they're local. Um, uh, access devices, so endpoint devices, whether they're repurposing physical PCs that, that were retired, um, whether they're purchasing thin or zero clients, uh, that's still owned and managed by, by the client. Um, applications, you know, all the applications that sit inside the image, um, you know, and other hosted applications that they have back at the enterprise, they, they, still, they still own that process. They're, they're in the desktop, they're owning that process. Uh, the image creation, very important part of doing virtual desktops is, is getting that image fine-tuned, making sure your, the correct apps are in there, the right settings are in there. Uh, you're, you're, you know, you're connected to your Active Directory and you have everything you need in there, still owned and, and managed by, by the enterprise. And, and your operating system license. So a, a very uh, question that comes up very often with um, doing virtual desktops is, is the Windows licensing. Uh, and specifically when it's hosted by a service writer, uh, you know, it's, it's even, uh, you know, asked, uh, can, can I do that? You know, can I, can I buy my Windows license from the service provider? Well, you know, the answer is in some cases yes, in some cases you need to bring the license to bear. So uh, I, I, won't, I won't dig deep into Windows licensing, but, but in short, if you're running a Windows server, for example, a, a service writer can provide a splat to you and you can rent, you can rent that desktop on a monthly basis uh, and pay for it like a subscription like you do. Uh, any other service you get from your service writer. Um, a Windows client OS license, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8, uh, not quite the same. Some of the licensing restrictions are different. Um, the, uh, the client brings that license to bear. Some service writers have relationships with, with the right um, distributors where they can actually provide what's called a VDA license to the customer. It's in the customer's name, but they can provide that as, as uh, bundled as part of the service. Um, but if, a, uh, if an enterprise is, has software assurance, um, you know, that's covered as well. So that's all managed by the client. Uh, down below the waterline here is everything else the service writer now handles. So 
So when you move your desktops to the cloud, these are the things that you don't have to worry about. We talked about data center facilities. You don't have to worry about power, cooling, rack space, anything else. The facilities are taken care of you by the service provider. Um, software, so not software that's in the desktop, but the, but the virtualization software, all handled by the service provider. So that is you know, the, the hypervisor software, and that's you know, a platform like the desktop, the desktop platform that is providing you the brokering and the management of your virtual desktop, all handled by the service writer. Upgrades, all handled by the service writer. You don't have to worry about moving from one version to another one. That's, that's done for you by the service writer. They do it in the maintenance window at a, at a time that's convenient for you. Um, on the hardware side, we talked about moving capital expenditures to operational expenditures, right? No longer are you having to shell out, you know, uh, just, you know, the, just to give you an idea of the cost of VDI, I mean, just to do, say, a thousand virtual desktops, you're probably talking about a half a million dollars worth of uh, capital expenditure. So now an enterprise is not having to shell out all that cash up front. You know, they, they, they move that to an operational expenditure and, and pay their service rider for that. And then support, you know, there's, there's always someone, your service rider has, has SLAs that they deliver. Um, you know, they, they provide the 24 by 7 support. Their, their job is to make sure your desktop stays up and running all the time. Okay? Uh, give you an idea of the market. Um, so, um, you know, this is the, the, total, uh, the, t the total market size estimate. So, on, on, you know, the, the big blue there is, is physical PCs. Uh, so, of course, in 2010, that's, that's a very large portion of the market. Um, the blue line that starts turning up uh, down the bottom and starts turning up, that is VDI. Um, and that's all of VDI. So that can be hosted uh, session desktops. That can be uh, on-prem VDI. Um, in 2014, is the number I'll call out with, with the, uh, the little bubble there. Um, 2014, 20% of desktops, uh, virtualized desktops, will be hosted. Um, that equates to about a, a, about a $3, $3 billion market. Uh, so a really large market, um, and one of the things that you know we're we're here to to talk to the OpenStack community is is about bringing a, a brand new market to to the OpenStack community and and really talk about some of the challenges that that brings and I'll and I'll get into that in in a, in a future slide here but but a really large market opportunity I mean everyone knows about the tablet uh, you know the tablet wave here you can see the big green uh, block there in 2014 but. Uh, but, but clearly, virtual desktops are on the rise, um, and, uh, and the physical desktop is, is on the decline. So uh, the desktop is clearly changing. OK, um, so uh, you know, a sample of, of some of the folks that are, that are delivering a hosted uh, desktop uh, with the desktop platform. So you know, four, four different types of folks. Top left, uh, Dell has a, has a service called Simplified DAS. Um, we look at Dell as a, as a systems integrator, so they're you know they're a services provider that can provide you lots of lots of services. Hosted desktop offering is one of them. Uh, a managed service provider. So these are folks. Uh, typically, they end up being sort of regional providers, but but they're they're one stop shopping. So they can provide desktop support. They can provide patching of your of your OS. They're basically, you know, SMBs love these guys because they say, look, I don't, I don't want to deal with my desktops. Just, just do it for me. And, and they do everything. They can host the desktop, you know, with, with, with a DAS platform, and they can do all the management of the desktop for you. Support, patching, everything. Um, telco providers. So, so BT is an example here. Um, but, you know, telcos, you know, have big pipes. They've got infrastructure. Uh, they're already delivering some cloud services. Uh, doing DAS is, is, a, is a logical opportunity for them and, and we see lots of telcos expressing interest in and in, in lots of them providing desktop services. And then another partner of Desktone called Navisite. Uh, Navisite's a cloud provider so they're already providing infrastructure as a service. They've got a you know large uh, investment in infrastructure. Uh, layering a, a desktop service on top of that makes makes total sense for for cloud providers. So it's just another cloud service. Okay. Um, one might ask, how is, how, is, uh, how is doing DAS different from a, from a cloud platform? So we, we, get, we get asked the question a lot is, is why, why can't Amazon do what you're doing? Uh, why can't a cloud platform do what you're doing? Uh, it, it really comes down to the three things here, which is session management. So cloud platform has no, no concept of a session. So 
what, what a DAS platform, what a VDI platform does is it knows when people are logged into their desktop, uh, when, they're, when they're disconnected from their desktop, uh, when, they, um, when, they, um, when they were allocated to the desktop, provisioning, right? So provisioning, provisioning of desktops and managing large-scale desktop pools is something that cloud platforms and, and, and cloud services, uh, infrastructure services typically don't do. So you, know, you want to put your, your engineers in a, in a specific group uh, pool of desktops because you know what, they're, you know, they have a different profile and they, they have different apps and they have different services that you provide to that group versus your sales group versus your marketing group. Um, so it, you know, a, a DAS platform uh, and the desktop platform provides um, that, that notion of pooling and being able to group people into, into alike groups. Um, and then um, I talked about session management brokering. So you know, being able to, to do uh, like a pooling concept uh, where you over allocate or over subscribe users. So you may have shift workers or, or seasonal workers or, or you know, where, where having a one-to-one -one desktop doesn't make sense. It's, 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 it's more costly and it's, it's overkill for what you need. Um, so if you have, you know, three shifts a day in a call center, you don't need, uh, you know, you don't need a desktop for every one of those. You can, you can rotate that. So you can do, uh, for example, a non-persistent pool and, and oversubscribe that pool and, and the desktops will, um, you know, someone logs out of that desktop that will revert, roll back into the pool and be ready for the next person. So an example of, of some things that um, uh, the desktop platform and a, and a DAS platform do that, that cloud doesn't do today. Um, I talked about uh, patents there. Um, so some of the patents that we have on, on our, on our uh, technology. Uh, I mentioned our technology is uh, very different from enterprise class VDI. So enterprise class VDI is, is very tuned and, and very designed for uh, serving desktops uh, to the enterprise, single tenant, on the LAN. Um, the, the desktop platform and a DAS platform is is architected and built differently. It's, it's really designed for multi-tenancy, just like a cloud platform is, um, and, and delivering it as a hosted solution, so over the WAN. So everything we've done has been to optimize over the WAN and optimize for multi-tenancy and provide that management built into the platform. Um, so very, very different from, very different use cases from, uh, from, from Enterprise VDI. Okay. Okay. Um, Talk a little bit about the, the, the DAS platform. Um, like to show this global view of the world because when you think of a DAS platform, um, uh, mul multiple data center support is, is very important to that service. Um, so if you're, if you're a large enterprise, you have users, say, in, in both coasts of the US, in, in Europe, in Asia PAC, um, you want to manage those users the same way as, uh, you know, the, the, regardless of what geography those people in. And if I fly from the East Coast to the West Coast, I don't want to have to know I got to point to a different broker and I, you know, I got to manage those desktops differently. It, it, it's all handled under the covers. So, so, so multiple data center and multiple geography support is, is built in. It's very, again, it's another difference between enterprise VDI and, and hosted uh, DAS, desktops in the cloud. Um, uh, up top, I'll call your attention to, uh, to the different desktop types. So uh, I talked about regular Windows client OS. Um, RDS, uh, or session-based desktops, very popular for, for a certain class of, of users. Uh, the desktop platform can do RDS. It can do Windows, uh, regular Windows desktops. It can do Linux desktops. So we see, you know, in the, especially in the developer community and, you know, some of the, some of the folks that are, that are here. Um, you know, a Linux-based virtual desktop is, is, uh, is desirable uh, for, for certain use cases, and, and we, we also do Linux-based virtual desktops as well. Um, so uh, lots of options uh, provided there. We talked about the licensing uh, of the desktop. Um, down the bottom, um, I'll, I'll talk about um, what's there. I mean, basically, the DAS platform, we layer on top of virtual infrastructure. Um, so the hypervisor and the compute uh, network and storage, uh, very, uh, very important thing. What we provide to our service writer partners and our customers, uh, not only the, the software, which is the core intellectual property uh, of, of Destone, we also provide what we call a blueprint. And that blueprint really is a recipe or a prescription of how to do desktops as a service. It describes how to do uh, multi-tenancy, how to configure your networking to use VRFs and, and layer two VLAN security 
to, uh, to provide that multi-tenant solution. It, it describes how to configure your storage, what your needs are for your storage, what type of storage you should have. Uh, talks about the compute and, and how our platform integrates with the hypervisor. Um, very important because it's, it really gives the service rider uh, a good idea of how they need to build their, their platform. Uh, because desktops is not something that's core to a service rider. They're typically most service riders are, are infrastructure providers. They don't know much about providing a, a desktop service. So, so our blueprint is a big piece to, to helping them uh, get going and prescribing them uh, how to deliver that service. Okay, so the evolution of DAS. Uh, so I just talked about the fact that we layer and we, we talk directly to the hypervisor, we talk directly to storage, we talk directly to networking. Uh, quite honestly, when we started in 2007, cloud platforms didn't exist. There was, you know, we had no choice but to talk directly to all of these systems individually. And if we wanted to support different devices, uh, different storage providers, we had to, to build a plugin for each one of these. So, you know, we spent a lot of time working on this virtual infrastructure layer um, and so that was, that was phase one, building on what we, you know, call physical infrastructure. Phase two is really building on top of a cloud platform and building on top of OpenStack. Um, you know, many, many benefits there, abstraction from, from all those virtual infrastructure components, uh, abstraction from, you know, the hypervisor, the compute, the storage, the networking. Um, you know, it really provides a good opportunity uh, for infrastructure partners where uh, instead of, you know, engaging and having to, to work with specific APIs, uh, you know, it's, it's more meat in the middle. So, so, so Destone, uh, you know, Destone Engineering builds, we build our platform, you know, to stay the OpenStack APIs, and then the vendor builds, you know, on, on the bottom side. So we meet in the middle, and, and, and it's a good way to, uh, to get common support for uh, infrastructure there. And it's a great ecosystem for, for partners, right? So it's a, it's a great way for us to evolve and, you know, we, w when, we, uh, when we go talk to service riders, they, they all have their, their choice of who they like to work with from an infrastructure perspective. You know, from a storage perspective, some like NetApp, some have relationships with EMC, some have relationships with Dell. Um, you know, quite honestly, um, you know, there's, the, the, there's advantages and disadvantages each, but, but service riders have their choice and we wanna give them their choice. We wanna, we wanna be as accommodating as we can to, to our service rider partners, so it's all about giving that abstraction and, and really building an ecosystem that allows for that. Um, so to give you an idea of, of you know, how is this architected, right? So uh, talked about a, being a multi-tenant platform. So you see here, this is showing a picture of two different tenants. They're running side by side. Um, each tenant gets their own broker. We integrate with, uh, as we said, we have, we have a backhaul connection to integrate with, uh, with the enterprise. Um, so, so that includes Active Directory. So we use the customer's Active Directory. This isn't like a, you know, a, a shared solution where there's a shared AD that everyone connects to. It's the customer's AD. We integrate with it. Uh, sometimes that AD is, is over the backhaul. Sometimes they'll stand up a replica AD in the data center so it's close by the desktops. Doesn't really matter to us. We'll integrate either way. Um, but, but every tenant has their own, has their own brokers. You know, their desktops are logically living on their network, different desktop types. Uh, the common layer down the bottom uh, is, is where some of, the, uh, some of the core intellectual property comes in, the resource manager. Uh, I talked about phase one being that we, we, we ride on top of physical infrastructure. So, so that resource manager is a common layer that talks to the compute, the networking, the storage. Uh, from the tenant side, the tenant has no idea whether they're running on top, what hypervisor they're running on top of what storage is on the back end, what networking is in the back end. Quite honestly, from a service rider perspective, it shouldn't matter. They're, they're, they're providing an SLA with a quality of service and they're delivering that to the customer and that's what they're held to. Um, and so it, it's, it's all about delivering and letting the enterprise deal with their desktops and letting the service rider deal with the virtual infrastructure. Uh, so that's, that's really what the picture looks like today. Um, Compare and contrast that to what the picture uh, could look like with OpenStack in the picture. So, you know, tenant A, tenant B still there. They each have their own broker. Desktops are logically living on their network. Uh, the difference here uh, is, is OpenStack is now slid in the middle there, right? And there's no, there's no direct access from that resource manager component to, to, the virtual inf to the virtual and physical infrastructure. OpenStack is in there, right? We've got Nova on the compute side, Quantum on the networking side. Send your glance Swift uh, for, for templating and, and, and backing store for, for the virtual images. Um, so 
you know, that, that's what the picture looks like, and that, that really gives us lots of flexibility and lets us go focus on what's core to us, which is providing a great desktop platform and not necessarily managing virtual infrastructure. Okay, um, when, when we engage customers, end customers, uh, not the service writer partners, uh, there's, there's, two, there's real two, two things that they, they ask and two things that they, that they want out of a desktop service. Um, the first thing is uh, everything comes down to cost. Um, so, you know, they always ask, is it as cheap as my physical desktop? Uh, the answer sometimes there is challenging because um, for the most part, enterprises don't have a good feel for what their cost of a desktop is. They know what they pay for a PC. They know what it costs to patch it. They don't know what it costs to really manage it and support it over time. Um, you know, so those, those estimates vary widely, but, but it is about cost and, and really, you know, is it, is it as equal to our, to our physical desktop? Uh, it's also about performance. You know, does it perform well? Will my users complain? Will they be happy with the desktop? Those are the two things. Uh, moving to an OpenStack platform, uh, and, and, and uh, to tell the truth about, about this picture here, so, so you see percentages here. I, I took out some of the hard numbers. We've got a very, very complex model that we put together around the cost of virtual desktop. We know what power and cooling costs, what space in the data center costs. We know what storage costs, you know, uh, the, the compute and the hypervisor costs. We have a very detailed cost analysis. For the purposes of this, I, I stripped those out, but some of the uh, this is an example of the savings that uh, can be delivered by moving to from from a from a virtual infrastructure building on top of virtual infrastructure to building on top of OpenStack with an open source hypervisor and, and other components to help drive down the cost. So clearly, big savings on the on the desktop virtualization license side. Operationally, moving to a cloud platform, moving to OpenStack uh, really allows to drive down the cost. Um, today, when it, when it, to get a customer set up, it involves configuring storage and configuring network and configuring hypervisors. Moving to a cloud platform allows us to automate a lot of those processes. So, you know, for us, the holy grail is all about, you know, an online try and buy model where, where somebody goes to a website once 100 desktops and they, uh, you know, a couple of hours later, they're, they're connected to their desktops, right? And everything is magically done behind the scenes, not by a human being, but by, by software automation. Um, and, and the components are there uh, to, to go do that. So moving to the cloud platform really enables that. Okay, uh, doing okay on time here. So why, why OpenStack for DAS? Um, Destone is a really strong proponent of open source. Our, our management platform uh, leverages open source uh, extensively. We have a, a Linux Ubuntu appliance. We have an open source application server. We have an open source database. We have, we use the Spring Framework. Um, open source, um, mature, um, friendly open source is, is, uh, is a good friend of ours. So, uh, so same goes for OpenStack. Um, we talked about costs. We talked about being vendor agnostic and Clearly, you know, everyone's here this week, understand that there's strong community support here. It's a very important piece of moving to, to so any, any open source is really all about, is there a good community support? Um, so that's, that's a big check here. Um, so the value of OpenStack for DAS, um, it allows us to get away from managing virtual infrastructure and really focus on a great user experience. And, and that's really, it's all about making end users happy. If end users are happy, the service will get adopted and that allows us to really focus more of our time on user experience. Scalability, um, you know, being able to get to tens and hundreds of thousands of desktops. Um, so the scale of a cloud platform, really important to, 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 a, to a DAS platform. Elasticity, everyone knows, you know, the, everyone knows when, when, you, when you go to a cloud, it's all about can I scale up, can I scale down. Good example here, you know, we have customers that are seasonal workers. Um, so uh, at tax season, we have, we have customers that say, look, I need an extra 500 desktops in tax season, and then that's gonna go back down to zero. I don't wanna buy 500 desktops, you know, and, and, and pay for them for, you know, for, for over three years or, or such. I need those 500 desktops for, for three months. Um, great use case, uh, contractors, dev and test, right? Good elasticity use cases. Uh, vendor flexibility, we talked about open source automation, shared infrastructure. Um, 
many providers we go into, we're not the only ones that are riding on top of their virtual infrastructure. They're running platform as a service, they're running database as a service, they're running all other services, and you know, they say, look, you need, you need to come in and you need to play nice with, with everyone else. We can't dedicate uh, large portions of our infrastructure just to the desktop service. So being able to, to, to share that and, and riding on top of a cloud really enables us to do that. So OpenStack will, will open those opportunities. Um, and then working with the OpenStack community. So, um, you know, we're, we're just getting engaged with the OpenStack community. Um, uh, kind of want to, uh, you know, part, part of this talk is really about um, really opening, opening people's eyes to the fact that, that desktop is a very different workload on top of, um, very different workload on top of a cloud platform. You know, I'd say the, the large majority of, of the OpenStack use cases to date have definitely been infrastructure as a service. DAS is very different. Um, you know, talk about the storage problem. Storage is, is huge uh, in virtual desktops. The, um, the random I.O. of virtual desktops, the high write activity, you know, the scale, 500, 500 servers is, is a lot of servers. 500 desktops is like a drop in the ocean, so the scale is very different uh, moving to uh, bringing, bringing DAS, desktop of service on top of a cloud platform. Um, so, uh, so we want to engage with the community, but we also want to, want to ask for, for other people's, other folks' help with that, to work with us to, to help really move the platform along uh, with some of the changes we think you know, would, would be really helpful in general, but, but are, are um, useful for, for, the, for the DAS use case. A um, Couple things that, that we wanna do here. HA for desktops, very different from servers. Um, you know, different use case. We've, we've been you know, sitting in some of the design sessions there. Future of EDI is non-persistence. Um, so uh, I talked about you know, layering and, and profile virtualization. Um, the, the holy grail of virtual desktops is to get to a point where none of your data is sitting inside the virtual desktop itself. It's all layered in, it's separated. You can, you know, you can detach that all, you can lose your desktop and you have all your data and all your profile and settings, et cetera. Very different use case from, from servers. We talked about the number of VMs. Uh, and DAS encompasses all of the OpenStack uh, projects. So Nova, Glance, Swift, Cinder. You know, we're, we're gonna engage with all of them. It's, you know, all of those components are, are key to the desktop service. So I'll stop there and I think we've got a few minutes, um, ask some questions and I'll stick around too if we run out of time. But first question. We, we are not using OpenStack today. Um, what, 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 really, uh, what really this is about is, is you know, we're, we're looking at the landscape and, and we're, we're looking at, at OpenStack to, to really provide a lot of value here. So as I mentioned, we're just engaging with the community. Uh, wanted to talk about what, what DAS would look like on top of OpenStack, uh, but it's something that we're, we're looking very closely at and, and you know, stay tuned for, for some news in the future. We do, we do. We do, yeah, so, so just to, uh, sorry, I should be repeating the questions here. So the question is around, do we, do we mitigate the, uh, the login and the bootstorm, a uh, common problem with, with VDI? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, with, uh, with persistent desktops, uh, typically they're up and running, so we don't have a lot, of, uh, a lot of reboots on those desktops, but we work very closely with our infrastructure partners. So part of the, the blueprint I talked about actually is, is a prescription on how to design your storage and design your infrastructure to really be resilient to those problems. They are real problems in a VDI environment. For, for user data? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. so the question is, uh, well, do people want to use uh, their own storage for user data? And absolutely, yes, yeah. so that's the, the backhaul connection I was talking about. Um, so, so absolutely, the desktops can, can reach out to that storage and, and, and use that, absolutely. Uh, you're talking about multi-tenancy, so if you go into a client and they've got all their Windows licenses, do you force them to throw all those Windows licenses away in order to go to the multi-tenancy? Uh, licensing that Microsoft requires you to have? Um, no, uh, so, so they can leverage their existing licenses. Um, it, it depends what they have. Uh, if they have software assurance, no problem. If they have VDA licenses for, for their existing windows, no problem. Uh, if, they're, if they're adding on to what they already have, they need to buy licenses for what's there, but, but we, we leverage exactly what's there. The multi-tenancy 
Um, the, the problem, and not to go too deep on the, on the licensing because it becomes a little rat hole, right. but the, the challenge, um, Microsoft has a specific rule that says that if a customer is running a Windows client OS, it needs to be on non-shared hardware. So customer A and customer B have to be on physical separate compute. Correct. Our platform uh, ensures that that happens, and we've ensured in the, in the early research we've done with the OpenStack platform that OpenStack can do that for us as well if we orchestrate it properly. Okay, so you're putting in rules to keep yes. them physically separated. A absolutely. But you're still calling it multi-tenancy. It's multi-tenancy because the service provider is delivering a multi-tenant solution. They're on separate physical hardware. Now on a Windows Server desktop or a Linux desktop, they absolutely can be on shared infrastructure yep. and, right. we, and we support that. Okay. Next question. Do you actually have a roadmap or a time frame for completion of phase two? Um, we do. Um, so. We do. It's not 100% public at the moment, uh, but but I'll 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 kind of just put it out there in, in, in a broad spectrum and say, 2013 for sure. Other questions? Okay, I'll stick around for a few minutes if people have other questions. But I appreciate the uh, the attention. Thanks very much.